If you're having a problem with sleep and it's sleep disordered breathing, sleep apnea, there are options uh, that can fit your specific needs. So when people have been diagnosed with sleep apnea, we have a couple of options to treat them. One is the, the, the standard and the most common is CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. That'll involve a pump, a mask. The mask might just be to the nose if you can breathe well through your nose or to the nose and mouth if you have nasal congestion and you need it. Basically, under pressure, you can't suck the airway towards closed. You can't snore at all. So, you know, if your problem is, uh, as about 80% of my referrals, that your wife is complaining about your snoring and you're choking and they're afraid that you're going to stop breathing. If that's the case, CPAP is usually the treatment. And under pressure, you can suck the airway closed. The snoring goes away immediately. And uh, it's not a, a horrible experience, uh, as everyone tends to expect. If they give it an effort, the vast majority of people are going to be very happy and surprised how much better they are and how much happier their, their spouse is or their significant other. Um, and that's what we recommend most of the time. The other option, uh, an oral appliance, which is just going to hold your jaw forward so that jaw and tongue can slide back and do the inclusions that cause the snoring and the sleep disordered breathing disruptions of sleep. You can get a, a mouthpiece that just holds the jaw in place or slightly forward. So this is mine. I've used one for close to 30 years. Basically, I went to a sleep dentist. The dentist made an impression of my teeth, and they send off and they, they digitally create a piece that fits perfectly over the upper teeth, one that fits over the lower piece, uh, over the lower teeth, that the upper jaw, this one, is not letting the lower jaw slide back this way, okay? And it's adjustable. This can, this can be uh, changed so you can move the jaw a little further. I'm facing this way here with this, okay? And so that's mine. When I get up in the morning, because this is pushing my jaw forward, I have this soft piece that I put in that puts my jaw back where it should be for a minute or two. And so I'm less likely to have jaw pain or to develop malocclusion where the teeth don't meet correctly because I've shoved the jaw forward. And so I routinely put this on when I take this off. And so far, I've had no problem with malocclusion and no problem with jaw pain. So for me, it's been a good solution. Just to show you that there are different ones. Again, there's a mechanism where there's a block so that one, one, one uh, part of the jaw can't move further. So this one also doesn't cover the front teeth. Uh, it just uh, uses the molars to, uh, to create the position. And it's obvious very little. Most of them you can open your mouth with, you can drink water, you know, uh, but you can't let the lower jaw fall back, and that's the concept. The other option for treatment is more involved. It's a pharyngeal nerve stimulator. People who fail CPAP can get an implanted pacemaker that goes up to a nerve in their neck, okay? So they have to go to an, or, uh, an ENT specialist, they have to be examined to make sure their anatomy is correct, and they have to have a pacemaker placed. That, that goes up to the nerve in the neck. There's also a sensor for, <laughs> in, in, in the chest. Then they go to someone like me multiple times as we up the voltage and they get used to the tingling. And then they get to do what the commercial shows where they wave the remote control over it and in a preset amount of time, let's say 20 minutes, uh, when, they, when it goes on, every time they take a breath in, their tongue sticks out and their, their, their neck may balloon a little bit. They call it bullfrogging. And for most of those patients, they are significantly better. Hopefully we can improve your sleep to improve your health and your well-being.